Trump is also planning on restructuring the nation's top spy agency once he takes office. This is according to reporting in the Wall Street Journal today. The journal citing reasoning that the agency is bloated and has become too politicized. Joining us is former Michigan congressman and former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Pete Hookstra, Congressman Hookstra, good to see you. What do you expect Thank to you. happen in these briefings in the coming days? Do you think this information will be made public to the American people? Well, I think some of the information clearly will be made public. This should have happened uh, a month ago. These hearings and briefings should have taken place long before we've had this, you know, four week <coughs> storm of allegations about Russia. Uh, and most of this came from leaks from the intelligence community. Uh, so, you know, the process was turned inside out. The leaks and then the briefings. You usually start with the briefings. Congress then knows what can and cannot be public. They know what the intelligence community uh, has found. Uh, so we're at the point in the process where we should have been at the beginning. The intelligence community briefing the president, briefing the president-elect, and briefing Congress on what they've discovered and what their conclusions are. Uh, Congressman, what do you make of the report that Donald Trump is looking at, the new Trump administration, would look at uh, revamping the office of the director of national intelligence, also looking at the CIA, again, with the aim to make it less politicized? Because what you were just talking about is a very political intelligence community. I think Donald Trump is taking exactly the right approach. It's time for the intelligence community to move back into the shadows. Uh, it shouldn't be out in front of these issues. Uh, it should be informing the president. It should be informing Congress of what their analysis is so that these folks can then go out and make the political decisions, the policy decisions that need to be, uh, be taking place. They need to focus on content and they've missed content a lot. We had a director of national intelligence who said the Muslim Brotherhood was a socially uh, a social good organization. They missed Benghazi. They missed the rise of ISIS. And so they need to get on content, develop human uh, human network, uh, human networks, human resources. They have to get back to being good at what they used to be good at doing and get out of the politics. Congressman Hookstra, this is Kirsten Hagland here. So I'm just wondering yeah. about cybersecurity generally, because at the Armed Services Committee hearing today, Senator John McCain has said that this isn't just about Russia. This is also more broadly about cybersecurity. And that's something we didn't hear a lot about on the campaign trail, but is really where this battle is raging the hottest. So as someone who's worked in intelligence before um, with Congress, what do we need to do in order to protect ourselves for the future, not only looking back at what happened with Russia, but how do we protect ourselves in the future and make cybersecurity a real priority going forward? Well, I think John McCain's absolutely right, and that's why this hearing is so important, not only to talk about Russia, but to do exactly what, uh, what you said he was talking about, identifying the threat from cyber. It's not only the, the hacking of our political institutions, it's the hacking of our potentially of our financial institutions, of our business institutions, of our military institutions, uh, and those kinds of things. It is the new battlefield. There's no ground rules there. And it's time, I think, for Congress and the administration in America to step up uh, and really develop a concerted effort to enhance cybersecurity uh, across the board because the risk is very, very great. And I'll point out before we move on to another topic that there is a report out there that the FBI never accessed those DNC servers as part of the yeah. investigation into this hacking. So a, a lot of holes, a lot of questions left there. Right. But let's move on, yep. Congressman, to the Obamacare fight raging on. So far, it's just a, it's mostly a big war of words. Both President Obama and Mike Pence headed to Capitol Hill yesterday to coordinate their respective parties' efforts on how to address the Health Care Act. Both Republicans and Democrats are working on how to shape their messages to voters. Listen to this. The first order of business is to repeal and replace Obamacare. Uh, Obamacare has failed, uh, and the American people have sent a decisive message to Washington, D.C. The Republican plan to cut health care wouldn't make America great again. It would make America sick again and lead to chaos instead of affordable care. Congressman, 
Congressman Hoekstra, yeah. did, and, and Donald Trump even warned the Republicans in Congress, make sure those Democrats, he, I think he said the Schumer clowns, own this. <laughs> Is that the danger if Republicans repeal and then delay and don't have a replacement and, this, and the Obamacare essentially sunsets over a period of two to four years? Yeah, I think you know, clearly there have been people who have benefited from Obamacare, uh, that they've now received uh, health care coverage. You know, it's collapsing in and of itself, uh, but clearly some people have benefited. And you know, so Republicans are going to have to go. A lot of times in policy like this, you have to manage the transition from where you are. You know where you want to go, but the really important thing is how you manage through that transition. And that's what Republicans have to be focused on uh, as we move to a more uh, improved health care position. Uh, they need to manage the transition. Right. Lee, I have to ask you about this. Yeah. I watched Congressman Jim, <laughs> Jim Himes on with Tucker Carlson last night, yeah. a Democrat, and one of the first things out of his mouth was literally that Americans don't like Obamacare. And by the way, eight out of ten support changing it significantly in some way. Americans don't like it because they've been lied to by Republicans about it, and it's because they don't understand it. And I thought that that was a depth and level of insanity that I rarely hear from Democrats. <laughs> the whole process on the, I think, on Obam Obamacare has been a disaster. And they're only willing to say what we haven't done right is articulate the message properly, right. make people understand. Right. But well, you people are too stupid is. to understand that, oh, I guess that the premium increases and the loss of coverage and I don't have access to my doctor and the du deductibles are high, that that's just smoke and mirrors? It's just, absolutely. They're just not willing to listen. They have their truth. We have ours and they're not willing to listen to anybody else. And it's, it's going to be to their detriment because the American people have spoken on this issue. They said eight out of ten, you're absolutely right, want change to this. And that's what the Republicans say they're going to do. They're going to bring, they're not saying we're just going to repeal it and let it go. Right. We're going to repeal and replace. Uh, Congressman Hoekstra, your final word. Yeah, I think uh, you're going to see this graphic often with Democrats standing next to their billboard, which says, make America sick again. And they're going to, people are going to relate those two things together. Uh, the other thing is the American people have spoken. They want Obamacare fixed, and it's going to be the pox on both houses, Republicans and Democrats, if they don't do something uh, and move forward on this. Well said, Congressman Hoekstra. Good to see you, as always. Great. Please Thank come you. Back soon. Happy New yes. Year, by the way. Happy